Hi there and welcome and today I want to cover the fastest and easiest way to get to 100,000 because there's a ton of videos online that don't actually cover the phases you're going to go through mentally as well as just practically what type of jobs you need to do to get there the fastest and easiest way. And a little bit of context, when I started, I was not definitely like super smart, knowing exactly what to do, where to go and have a good education or an MBA to get me started and right out of gate get $100,000 salary. So I'm going to be covering what you need to do when you have nothing and when you're starting from nothing and when you don't have an education and you basically need to grind to get through it. And there are multiple phases and the first phase that I want to cover today is the freedom income phase. This is the phase that I probably would call the phase until $3,000 because the only kind of thought that you're having as you're going through this phase is how do I make enough money to get me freedom so I don't have to worry, have anxiety and all that stuff. And I would even equate this phase because this is in my early 20s, that's how I would think about it. You know, this is the phase where I want freedom of time and freedom of location. I don't want a boss telling me where I have to work or when I have to work. So every time you have a job at this point, uh, even if you would make more than 3000 bucks a month, you're still wondering like, oh, you know, how can I go to Bali? That's like the common cliche right now. How can I go to Bali and just work from a laptop? AKA location and time. With time specifically, it's you, you basically don't want a boss who, to tell you, you have to come in from nine to five. I like sleeping. So <laughs> nobody's gonna tell me to come in at nine to five for every day. Uh, and so in this phase, in the early phase, the under $3,000 phase, I would say, this is the time when you need to do whatever it takes to find a potential remote job uh, or become a freelancer where you can create yourself stable income. So if you're becoming a freelancer, don't become a freelancer without having like a job on the side and then like transitioning when you make enough. That's also a common mistake that happens. This is the stability phase. And our main goal is to get to freedom income, which is usually the $3,000 a month is a good cutoff because at that point you can travel, you have a little bit of a cushion to take risks because the next phase is gonna be the passive income phase. So in this phase, after $3,000 a month, you maybe are working and you only have so many hours per week that you can donate, right? So you're location independent, so you're basically working on a laptop. If you've gone through actually finding a job, uh, you can use platforms like Upwork or just basically Facebook groups and apply for remote location jobs. There are Facebook groups for remote digital nomads. So if you have yourself a job where you're now working on a laptop, location independent, and you don't have to specifically work at you know times. So these are also specific jobs that you need to look for, like video editor, uh, writers, SEO writers, copywriters. There's so many jobs that you can look up that have that independence of time. So in that phase, you basically need to just research what type of job can I apply for? What kind of uh, employers, you know, employ people like that and just get stability. If you can get that from an employer, freelancer is the other route. So once you get to that route, like I said, we enter the passive income phase because the main question that tends to happen when you ha have just enough money, but not enough time to fulfill and get more money, let's say to get to 10,000 or 20,000 a month. Uh, so at this phase, you're starting to think, oh, maybe I should put my money in stocks. Maybe I should put my money in real estate uh, or like crypto because with 3,000 a month, you're not going to put it in real estate. Uh, and so this is very dangerous in this phase because in this phase, you need to actually have liquidity because the, the actual question you're asking yourself is, how do I get out of this job? Even though this freedom income is really cool, I'm traveling around the world, I'm working on my laptop, I don't have enough time and I want more freedom, I wanna go surf on the beaches and still have money coming in. I don't wanna be so involved in my business. That's usually the questions that tend to pop up. And so naturally, you tend to start looking outward, but you need to look inward into your actual business and then see what the best possible path is in the business. And so crypto is not the solution in this phase. Neither is investment stocks or I would even say pension funding. Uh, in this phase, it's saving money as much as possible to kind of invest into the next big risks that you're, that you're going to take. In the first big risk that you took, you didn't spend money. You basically either became a freelancer or found a remote job. In this phase, it's going to cost money to take risks because we need to now grow and get out of our uh, kind of like expenses funnel, out of our income funnel. We need to get 
uh, to a potential where you're not exchanging time for money. That's like after $3,000 a month, if you talk to people, that's like their number one problem. How do I get out of the phase of exchanging time for money? Uh, well, so this is how you do it. That's why I call this phase a passive income phase, because whenever you hear passive income in this phase, you're going to get really attracted. And also it's going to be dangerous because you're going to waste money and it's not going to help you. So in this phase, what I would say is, you need to actually learn the skill of launching products. Whether it's physical products or digital products, I'm more of a digital products type of guy. The profit margins are much higher, which means you can take bigger risks and lose less money. And so I push people towards digital products. In this phase, you need to learn a different skill set. How do I productize my services is the number one skill set, which is, let's say you became a writer for a remote job. How can you make products out of that? Maybe monthly recurring products that you can then sell at a pretty good profit margin to other people. Now, how do you sell products at a good profit margin? Let's say you're a writer. Well, first of all, you need to brand yourself. You need to have a website and a portfolio and usually also case studies. If you have built up some type of portfolio, then you also have built up case studies. So you can ask for data and analytics from people uh, that you've worked for, maybe your employer and screenshot them and put them as a portfolio case study on your website. So now in the next phase, the passive income phase, you're going to actually look at, for new clients and new acquisition methods to get those clients, whether it be email, Facebook groups is a good one, uh, or just using hot marketplaces where you have a call with people and then create like proper services and packages for them. So let's say you create a package. Here's a good one. This one usually always converts. You create a package, you're a video editor. Let's go away from writer. Uh, you're really good at video editing and creating content for social media. So now you create a website, Social Media Manager Deluxe. Uh, and so this is like your website. You now approach clients and you say, hey, I'm the founder of Social Media Manager Deluxe. For a thousand, uh, thousand bucks a month, we will take your YouTube video and make you know this YouTube video into like a TikTok video, Instagram video, everything video. And every day you will have at least like five videos posted. Now that's basically a crazy offer. For a thousand bucks a month, many people will jump on this. So basically you need 10 clients like that and suddenly you're doing it. And because your profit margins are actually good enough, uh, you can hire uh, outside help, uh, you know, from other digital nomads or just internationally, uh, which means that, again, you don't have to spend so crazily. Over time, of course, if you start making more than 10000 a month, you actually will feel the need to hire domestically a bit more uh, because just, you know, it's much nicer if you're in an office together. But in this phase, that's not the phase where you're doing it. So now you're making sure that your profit margins are high enough to offer these crazy type products. And then you hire people for 40 hours a week. You train them. You make sure that they can create five videos a day. And so if they can make five videos a day and they cost you less than a thousand bucks a month, which is possible if you hire in Asia, then you can start creating these type of products. So at one point you're going to get really good. Let's say the first two months you're closing like two, three deals. You're at 3000 a month and your team is fulfilling it, right? But right now you still have your stable job. So you're at 6,000 a month already, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're learning the skill of passive income because you're right now overseeing things. And if you have the best scenario, then you have star employees who are fulfilling everything for you without you doing anything. But this is why I call this a skill, because in the beginning, that's not the nightmare you're gonna go through. You need to go through a legit nightmare before you get there. And so you're gonna need to learn how to motivate people, how to create standard operating protocols. Uh, basically, a standard operating protocol is a, is a hard word for just explaining you know, uh, dummy proofing and explaining how to do and fulfill certain things. Uh, and so once you learn that skill, which takes like, could take anywhere between six to nine months, uh, and then you need to make a ton of mistakes, move like fast, fail fast, uh, learn from those mistakes. Uh, and so basically, the good thing in this phase is, however, you're making money. So you can compensate for you just, you know, failing. You're making money in the process, so, you know, it's kind of worth it. You're just going to work a lot. Uh, but at one point, you're going to find star employees. They're going to deliver exactly what you can, and you're going to be able to package and productize your product much, much better. And so suddenly, you're entering this potential, like, 10K a month, 15K, 20K a month phase where it kind of feels like passive income. Except what you did in this phase is not exactly passive income. You're just productizing your services and automated it properly with a team. The actual phase of passive income, I would say after... 
uh, you definitely need to be in the six figures for that. Uh, and so once you're in the six figures for that, so let's say this is the phase 10, 15K a month plus. Uh, so at that point, you're going to actually want to create something really scalable. Uh, and so productizing services, that's nice. It'll get you to maybe like, from my experience, a couple of million maybe if you're lucky, uh, but it's going to be a grind. The other part that you probably would want to explore I mean, a couple of million is actually the exception. Uh, you'd probably be a bit less than that. So maybe I'm like too positive about it because well, uh, once you enter the 10K plus uh, phase, you're going to start looking at digital products or specifically products that are much more scalable. Uh, and at this point, I usually kind of want high profit margins. High profit margins are like 80% plus. And so with these type of products, and this is like where it's kind of going crazy nowadays with education, these are basically like courses, uh, templates uh, in a film. This could be, or in photography, this could be LUTs. This could be uh, addendums, like uh, warranty licenses there's so many passive income products i actually created a hundred plus ideas of uh, things that i seen my friends do or myself actually tested and it worked and i've created that spreadsheet it's in the link down below if you want to see it um, it's free you can just sign up it goes straight to your inbox uh, but basically in this phase we're looking at these high profit margin digital products super easily scalable and launched really fast uh, because now you have the skill set to actually do it you know how to make money you know how to scale and automate with people and so when you actually scale and automate with digital products, it's going to go much, much simpler, faster and easier. Um, so that's kind of like the short phases that are going to get you to like the 100K, because like I said, once we're nearing the 10,000 a month and you're in that productized service space, you're definitely going to hit 100,000. But just before maybe you even hit 100,000 or maybe just after you hit 100,000, you're going to already start having these questions of like, isn't there an easier way to do it without a team? Maybe I should actually have products and not like uh, these productized services. Uh, and so these are just the natural progression of questions that I've had as I've been building my businesses and my type of you know, passive income, I guess, if you would call it that. Uh, and so I don't consider YouTube, for instance, passive income. That is, I, I don't even make income from it. So, so to me, YouTube is basically productized services. These are people who go on camera, explain things or make a nice entertaining video. But because of YouTube, YouTube's algorithm, you have to keep pumping out content. And so this isn't really like a passive income. However, what's attached to it, like merchandise and fulfillment and all that stuff that is automated for them, those could be like properly passive income because they don't have to do anything there. And so it's always, you need to be realistic about, uh, you know, what is passive income, what's not. But through experience, you're going to learn these things anyways, because I think, or at least I believe, there are natural progressions that you're going to go through uh, in the first phase, freedom income phase, the second phase, the passive income phase, or I guess the passive product income phase, where you're, or uh, where you're thinking like, how do I productize my services? And then afterwards, when you start like nearing 100,000 or past 100,000, you start actually thinking about proper passive income products. Like what is what is the interface I need to create where I don't do anything, which means that the only thing I need to do is advertising, marketing, and you know, scale like crazy. So courses for YouTubers are obviously the most logical path forward, but there's many more that you can do like masterminds, uh, uh, accountability uh, challenges, so, so many that you can do um, that we're definitely exploring. They're all in the 100 plus idea spreadsheet list that I told you about. But yeah, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed it.